Wait, Ovens St. Peru. Ovens, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. We'll take our first question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cageside Press. Your line is open. Hey, OSP, how are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. I want to start. I was on your Instagram and I saw that Kevin Holland wants the secrets to the Von Pru choke. I mean, are you going to be meeting up with him sometime if he's healthy? Um, definitely. We got the same manager, so we definitely been around each other. Um, so, I mean, I haven't got a chance to respond back to him, but I'll definitely end up, uh, uh, showing him how I finish it. This, uh, you know, I believe her third fight of the year. We've heard about different closures happening once again around the country. I'm just wondering, has your training situation been affected or changed with everything going on in recent weeks? <sighs> No, not necessarily. Um, it was just like the fight that I had back in September or whatnot. I couldn't worry about that. Um, and my focus, so my focus, my primary focus is to train. And um, that's what I've been doing. And, you know, um, if I start worrying about other little stuff that's happening around me, I won't focus on training. I mean, I, it's something I can't control, so that's why I don't worry about it. Understood. There's a lot going on. At light heavyweight lately, I wanted your thoughts. How do you think things play out potentially with Adesanya and Jan Blahovich? Man, to be honest, I didn't even know about that fight until this week. I'm just kind of actually until like yesterday. So, you know what? I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Um, I could say I'm interested in it, but not necessarily. Um, you know, all I got to do is just like take my one fight at a time and. And uh, whenever, whenever my opportunity to come, which would be sometime in 2021, I won't be worried about it. I'm definitely not start worried about it. But until then, it's just like I don't really, I don't really think about it. Just because you know, with the 205 division, a lot of things going to shake up, and a lot of things usually end up shaking up, and it's going to continue to happen too. My final question to talk about what you have going on. Can you just give me your thoughts on Jamal Hill as an opponent and what he brings to the table? I mean, he's a young, hungry fighter. Um, you usually have fighters that come in, they're young, they're hungry. You win your first couple bouts or whatnot, you feel really good, you feel unstoppable. But um, he always got to remember, I've been in this game for a while too. So, I mean, he do have a lot of threats, but, you know, I think uh, overall I have more threats than he does. Hey, thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Jordan Ellis with Low Kick MMA. Your line is open. Hi, Ovens. Hey, how you doing? I am fine, thanks. And so this is kind of the second up and comer you're facing on the bounce now. And we're a guy. You're a guy who we've known for being, you know, at the top of the division for so long. So what do you make of these matchups the UFC are giving you right now? Man, I'm not complaining about it. I mean, at the end of the day, is a is a situation where, um. You know, if I have a chance to to put on a good show and uh, potentially have a really good bonus out of that, I'm not going to complain about it. You know, this is a fight game, and you know, uh, if you tell me to fight somebody and to fight a favorable fight from towards my end, I'm definitely going to end up uh, taking it. But moving into 2021, is is the ambition to still climb up them rankings and and potentially pursue pursue another shot of the title? Oh yeah, definitely. That that that's been. Everything since day one, even with my roller coaster, uh, you know, record, even my ro roller coaster career, or whatnot, that's been everything since day one. So, you know, you know, 2020 is kind of me getting my feet back in the water, and you know, 2021 is me actually um, busting open the door. And just finally, um, you moved up to heavyweight for Ben Wef Rothwell. It didn't quite go your way. Is it was that a one-off? Are you are you done with heavyweight, or do you see yourself going back there at at some point? It depends if the opportunity presented itself. I'll do it again because, you know, it was, it was fun not to cut weight, but, you know, it was a little different because some of the shots I put him down with, like most heavy, most light heavyweight would have stayed on the ground, you know. You can see that from my last fight. Um, but he, I mean, like I said, it was a good learning experience. And um, would I do it again? Definitely. Okay, thanks for your time. Good luck with fight night. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Your line is open. Hey, Ovens, uh, kind of following up on your uh, face in the up and comers, you know, two fights ago, you fought a guy who was undefeated coming into the UFC, uh, you know, had, had picked up a lot of wins in a row and you, you obviously submitted him. Then your last fight, you know, Phil had a bit of hype behind him. 
is there is there is it kind of fun you know facing the, the young guys and kind of you know being that first blemish on their on their record so because obviously here you got John Mahal Hill he's undefeated uh but you are you know kind of a big step up in competition for him I mean definitely um I mean I don't know it's just like uh, for some reason I, I at times I think out of the 205 division for up and coming guy I think I'll be the one of the worst guys to actually go in with but you know it is what it is some guys feel like they have it and uh some guys want to jump into the top but it's different man uh this game is different because you got guys that have been around for a while like myself and you got the experience level behind it and it's not only that just uh you know experience being in the cage with like top level guys and whatnot and these guys are coming up yes i mean anything can happen within a fight but the circumstances between that fight with what i got going on with what, I, what i've been through fighting wise and whatnot it's going to make it a lot more difficult for him. And I mean, every time you look at the, the outcome towards the fight or whatnot, it, it's leaning towards my way very, very much so. And what's crazy about it too is like, even the odds right now got me actually the underdogs. And it's funny because I think the Vegas odds, when the, when the Vegas, when they're doing their odds or whatnot, they're looking at a guy with an undefeated record. Yeah, I mean, it necessarily don't mean anything. Um, I've been a while for a while. It's the same thing. My last fight, I was underdog. Apparently, this fight, I'm the underdog too. So, it works in my favor. Although that you know, knowing the work you put in and the guys you fought and beaten, and, and you know, <laughs> you kind of faced the you know the who's who of this division for a lot of years, and you have with so many of them. Is it frustrating that maybe you're not getting the respect you deserve? You know, going into some of these fights. No, they just don't know any better. I mean, a lot of times when people look at people kind of related to boxing, it'll be like this person going to lose because, you know, this person an undefeated boxer or whatnot. The mixed martial arts is completely different. If you stay in this game long enough, you're not going to be undefeated. It's point blank. It's really hard to be undefeated because, you know, that day is going to come when you catch an L. Um, but even in this 205 division right now, if your talent level, if you just coming in and you want to jump right on top and start fighting the top guys in the division, it's not going to take long for you to first, to get that first L. Isn't there some excitement though about you know the growth of the light heavyweight division? A lot of years, you know, it was basically six or seven at the top. Yourself, you know, Glover, Ryan Bader when he was around. You know, John Jones obviously at the top, and then you had like a lot of guys who were just kind of behind you who could never really get into that top six or seven. Now we are seeing a lot more young, up and coming, you know, light heavyweights. The division is kind of filling out. Is there is there some kind of fun to that knowing light heavyweight is actually growing and getting bigger? Because again, for the longest time, it felt like we had like six or seven top guys, and then just you know a lot of kind of no names. Well, the reason you have six or seven top guys because they knew how to correct that uh, uh, margin of error. What I mean by that is, you know, I tell people a lot of times, you know, when I was first coming up, you know, I was. I think my first five fights in the UFC, I was like five and zero, oh. and um, you know when that happened, it's cool. But when you start hitting the top fifteen or whatnot, you'd be like, okay, that was a little work for me right now. The top ten, you start hitting that top ten, you'd be like, okay, these fights are are going my way, but they're more of a decision type of win, or you know, I got to put a little more effort towards this win. But when you get in the top five, to be honest, man, that margin error is small because every time you yeah, that window of error is small, and if capitalize on that i mean the best example used on that is if you watch glover that's what glover does all the time you know when he fought anthony smith and hurt and when he got he just kind of waited his turn and end up uh, uh beating anthony smith same thing with his last fight when he fought uh tiago santo same thing um you know he, he he's been there he knows how to do that he's just like okay cool i'm not in trouble and um and that's what a lot of that's where experience come from. It's just like when you're in that top five, it's hard. But some guys are in that top five, and it's hard to stay in that top five too. Because you know when you when you actually fighting these top fighters or whatnot, a lot of these young guys want to want to hurry up and come up. Um, you know, my advice would be like you can do that, but just remember if you fight somebody in the top five, after you do that, there is going to be no more easy fights for you. Everybody that you're going to fight is going to be within the top five or top ten. And I mean, every single time you're going to have to be scratching and crawling craw 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 for everything. So you know, these people don't understand, like, I'm, 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 I like where I'm at, but when 2021 come around, I'm, I'm hitting the doors full running because I've been there before and I know what to expect. So I'm good. <laughs> and last one, everything goes well. 
Saturday and you beat John the Hall Hill. You know, when you look at the division, you got you mentioned a guy like Anthony Smith, who was on a couple of tough losses, got a big win this past weekend. Is kind of the idea, not Anthony Smith necessarily, but is that kind of the idea after this? Like obviously you're gonna fight who the UFC puts in front of you, but would you like to see more established names? Not necessarily you have to fight the number one guy right away, but is there a part of you that feels like you want to fight more established guys after this one, after you kind of have, you know, three three prospects in a row kind of, you know, in your last three light heavyweight fights? Man, um, yeah, but at the end of the day, like I said, to me, I'm an entertainer. I'm going to get up there regardless, whether regardless whether it's you feeding me these newbies or – you're putting me out there with some of the top contenders. And to be honest, some of the top contenders too is just like, it just depends. Um, you know, a lot of guys play smart or whatnot. You get some guys in the top five, you get some guys in the top 10 who be, who, 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 who have a fight percentage to them and they, they'll be like, okay, I don't want to take that fight. It's a risky fight. So, you know, you can do that all day um, once you establish yourself within the rankings or whatnot. But, you know, for me, once I get there and just be like, okay, cool. Everybody in the top 10 right now, you know, everybody in top 15. Cool. Let's go. Thank you, Evans. Thank you. We'll go next to Omar Mert with S Sport. Your line is open. Hello. Hello. Uh, my question is a possible win against Jamala Hill, an undefeated guy. How may it affect your chance on contendership, like on your spot on the rankings? Um, that's something I'm not thinking about right now. All I'm thinking about is pretty much getting my hand raised at the end. Um, the, the, the thing about the UFC, I, even with the rankings, the UFC don't really care about the rankings. They, they like guys putting on shows. So if I go out there and put on a show, that's all that matters. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I've been one of the, I guess, the active light heavyweight. So, um, you know, as long as I put on the show, I'm pretty good. I'm not worried about the rankings right now. Uh, what do you think? Like, how without John Jones on the picture, how many wins it takes to to the title shot for you? How many straight like wins? To be honest, um, I don't know. I'm thinking either, you know, three, four, or five wins. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, it's just me doing one fight at a time. And I can't, I don't like thinking like multiple fights ahead of time. I mean, I'm not focusing on the task at hand. So as long as I have this one fight in front of me and I keep on going that way, I'll be fine. So last question, like you are, to, you are 37 and how long do you want to keep it going? To be honest, I don't know, man. My last fight, I felt amazing. Um, and this fight, I'm feeling um, Danny the same way. Um, it, it it depends. Like I'm taking care of my body's pretty. I'm taking care of my body pretty good. So as long as I can keep going, you know, I'll, I'm gonna be one of the guys that, you know, I'm 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 not gonna quit the game unless I know I need to. Like even when I played football, people were telling me, you know, why'd you quit playing football? And I was like, I never quit playing football. Football quit on me. You know, with mixed martial arts, it'd be like, I love this. I love this game. You know, I'm not going to quit on mixed martial arts until mixed martial arts quit on me. But I'll know when my time comes, too. Thank you, Owens. Thank you. We'll go next to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. All right, Gabriel, your line is open. Okay. We'll go instead to uh, Cote Cruz with Ford Win Podcast. Your line is open. Hey, Owens. How you doing? I'm doing good. You're reviving with that song, man. <laughs> well, it happens. Uh, with this fight, you will match uh, Shogun and Jones for the most light heavyweight fights in history. Uh, what do you think about reaching this milestone? How, do, how does that make you feel as a fighter? You said I'll, I'll do what now? I'm sorry. I'll repeat. Uh, I said that with this fight, you will match Shogun and Jones for the most light heavyweight fights in history. Oh, okay. So, what do you think about reaching this milestone? Man, to be quite honest, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. It's crazy because 
apparently I got a lot of, uh, I guess, I got a lot of uh, things going within the 205 division, the most finishes, um, uh, the most close. I, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of records that I'm up there for in the 205 division that I never realized or whatnot. And I guess that's another one. Um, it, I don't know. To be honest, yeah, I don't know. It's just I don't think about it. Like people have to tell me, and they're like, "Oh, okay. Do you know you're tied for this much or whatnot, or this much finishes in the 205 division?" I think Glover and I was tied after his last fight. He he has me by one now. Um, I never really paid attention to that until like people actually throw it in my face, and this is another thing that you actually um, threw in my face. I didn't know. I mean, I guess I'll just keep on going. I feel good. I get. I can keep on going. How would you describe the moment that your career is currently in? What do you feel about the future and what are those motivations that will take you there? Um, man, uh, right now, my current situation, am I happy about it? Yes, I'm happy about it. Reason being is because of the way I feel right now. And I think that's the biggest thing. And um, as long as I can keep telling myself to feel this way, I'm going to be perfectly fine. You know, but other than that, the only thing I can do is take, take everything one fight at a time. I would love to uh, ask you about your country, Haiti. How do you feel about representing Haiti and what kind of advice would you give to your nation to push MMA? Um, how do I feel about it? I'm first generation Haitian American and, uh, you know, both my parents were born in Haiti and stuff. And a lot of times, you know, it's one of the things where I come out and I have the Haitian flag with me all the time. And uh, people don't realize that. It's like, you know, a lot of the reason I do it because of my heritage and whatnot, it means a lot. And um, uh, it can go back as to, you know, there's a slogan that, you know, a lot of the first generation Haitian kids have is 1804, which means like um, when Haiti got their independence from France. And, and it means a lot because Haiti was the first black republic to break away from, uh, from slavery. So, you know, with that, you have to have a strong lineage or whatnot. And, you know, that's what I always kind of remind myself where I come from. So, um, but as of, you know, mixed martial arts in Haiti or whatnot, you have a lot of guys right now, Haitian fighters are coming up. Um, it just takes time. It, just, it literally takes time. So, but a lot of, it, it's crazy. A lot of them are coming up within the mixed martial arts one. But if you look at, you know, other sports like football, track and basketball, especially football. We are pretty much all over the place in football right now. Um, but yeah, um, me being Haitian means a lot. It's just, yeah, it means a lot. That's beautifully put, man. Thank you for your time. Best of luck on your fight. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ovens. You're all set. Appreciate it.